amazing project. Yes. Today I have some really great tips and tricks for you as well. Um, as I, we did have like two or three trial ones before this that we were able to perfect. So we're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna talk about heating sources. We're gonna talk all about um, sublimating on acrylic because it, that is actually to me like a little bit more nerve wracking. It is. Um, there's more uh, error that could happen uh, aside from your print for this project, yes. so more heating elements, mm -hmm. but it's gonna be really good. I'm super excited for some of the, the hacks and it's going to be so, so good. And we are really, really excited. Lauren, what's everyone saying in the comments? Yay, I cannot wait to make this project. Let's go over to the craft table and take a look at what's going on so I can give you a full on review of everything we have here. I'm with my water down here. Um, there's not too much here if you already have your sublimation supplies. Um, I mean, it's really just getting the blanks. So this is your acrylic blank that you have here. Um, I'm gonna measure this real quick. I wanna tell you the size of ours is, it's a three inch circle. Um, it's a three inch circle acrylic blank. And they're awesome. We're gonna actually turn it into a keychain. I mean, guys, can you, can you see that? I don't know if you all are able to see that. We can go overhead if we need to. Um, we can go overhead. This is what we're making today. Tell me if I need to move it up or down or how is it? Oh, sweet. So this is what we're making today. I mean, Lauren, this is so adorable. And this is like real life. Like this is something people could really use. Uh -huh. the, like this, a perk is that this vinyl won't fall off because we're not using vinyl today. Right. So that's really a big deal. Oh yeah. Big deal. Let's go over supplies real quick. Um, I have the heat glove because we love these. I, I think if you're gonna sublimate and do anything other than t-shirts, like you need these, like the, mm -hmm. the, the, like at least one. If you could have two, even better. Right. Um, I'm definitely using rubbing alcohol today, paper towel. We, cause we're extra, we yeah. have everything you need to turn it into like an actual um, keychain. So we have all the hardware, we have the, um, the little, I'm having spacing out. Needle nose pliers. Needle pliers, yes, needle nose pliers. And then um, the little the little tassels, guys. The tassels are awesome. And all of this can be picked up like at Amazon. So you can check out our Amazon links um, down below to go shopping. That'll be so much fun. Supports the channel. And y'all, I have the StarCraft heat press today. And let me tell you, there's a TikTok coming out soon of Lauren and the, <laughs> <laughs> and the, the StarCraft heat press. Yeah. Because let me tell you, this thing is heavy. Heavy. Heavy, 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 heavy. Um, so we should post that TikTok right after Yeah, this. we'll have to post it today <laughs> just so you can see and understand what we're talking about. We'll post it on Instagram. So now you'll have a reason to go follow after the show. Um, but this is going to be preheated to 385 and we're gonna heat this for 50 seconds. So a lot of our warping and our issues actually happened when we were using it at 60 seconds. For some reason, sublimation is one of those things that 10 seconds can actually do a big difference. It's like a big jump, whether it's your color's not crisp enough, it's not rich enough. 10 seconds can make or break a project, especially when you're talking about this adorable keychain that we're gonna to do today. Now I have a question from a viewer that I wanna address. And they asked, Tanner, can I do this with infusible ink? And the answer is technically you could use half of this project and you'll know what I mean when we get to design space. You could do the shape of the outline. You're not able to do the text um, as easy as we are today. Like you can't tell infusible ink. You can't print on infusible ink. It would be really cool. I've never tried it, but you could cut the shape out in infusible ink and then use an infusible ink marker to actually draw the writing if you if you really needed to. Right. But it's a lot easier what we're doing today with sublimation. So, yay! Oh my gosh, if you have the gloves, the gloves are a must. Yes, I'm glad everyone's like in agreement. We have to have the gloves. Yes. Um, I love that. So this is the StarCraft heat press. I get questions all the time. Um, is this worth the money? It's the clamshell. I, I did splurge on it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't splurge a lot on utensils, but like, they're always sold out. Yeah. They're always like talked about. And I wanted to know why. This does not have the swing away arm. I thought I'd be very upset not having a swing away arm. Uh -huh. I actually really like not having a swing away arm. I know that sounds crazy, but I haven't, I haven't needed it. I will say I've done a lot of trainings, especially Lauren, when we were doing boot camp. 
um, boot camp would have been very helpful oh, yeah. uh, to maybe have a swing your arm, but we made this work great. So, so Deborah has a good question before. Here is what we've done so far in design space. Like this is not super tricky at all. We're using two fonts. We are using one Maker's Gonna Learn cut file, and we're actually using two images from Maker's Gonna Sublimate. So over here that I have selected right here, this is from Maker's Gonna Sublimate. So you're getting the sublimation background swatch and you're getting the sublimation watercolor. So there's a few different ones you can choose from. Lauren, imagine using the watercolor on a full wrap tumbler. Oh, I think it would be beautiful. Oh, I love that. We have some really fun full wrap tumblers coming out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna do a video comparing the Easy Press, uh, the Mug Press, excuse me, to the convection oven. So those will be really good for the full wrap tumblers. So in addition to the files from the Maker's Gonna Learn um, sublimation course, we're using one file, which is Spring Flowers from um, makersgonnalearn.com. So if you're a member, you'll have this one. And then we're actually featuring two fonts today. So we have um, we have Albuquerque, um, and we also have um, Growing, I believe. Oh my gosh, I had it. I was so proud Is of myself for memorizing. Uh, no, it's not downloaded. I was so proud of myself for having it memorized, but I'll find it real quick. Um, let's go to makersgonnalearn.com and I'm gonna download it and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to download a font today. It starts with a B. Oh my gosh. Um, we not, had this issue literally last week. Is this not so week. fun? Oh my gosh. We uh, had this issue last like, week. I was like, I'm not going to write down the, oh my gosh, it's called Blown Away. That's I, it. I love Blown Away. That's why it's it's one of my top, mm, I think it's in my top 10 because Blown Away, when we first added fonts, this was one of our first. So Blown Away kind of has a special place in my heart. Yeah. I highly recommend y'all to download it. So um, when you become a member, which you can today using the coupon code MAKE um, to get that year membership if you don't already. So once you download that, you get the zip file. We're gonna open up the Blown Away uh, font right here. We're gonna install that font. And then bada bing, bada boom, Lauren, that took what, it's 20 done. seconds? Right. I mean, look at that. So what I'm gonna do now is head over here back to design space, do, 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 and we already have it. So what we could do, one of my favorite hacks that Lauren taught me was if your project's saved and everything, you can just ask uh, design space to reload mm -hmm. um, and then you will have your correct font. So I love it, love it, love it. So Sandra asked, she said, I have the Cricut mug press, but my next big purchase is going to be a bigger mug press. It's, I can do all shapes and sizes. Do we have a recommendation? We actually oh my recommend gosh. a convection oven. Yeah, over Sandra, a mug press. Sandra, Sandra. I really want you to consider the um, convection oven because it's going to allow you to do tumblers in our specific convection oven that's mentioned in the course. Lauren, I can do three full wrap tumblers at one time. That is huge mm -hmm. because for example, just to understand the training in the sublimation class, as the craft develops and we learn new things, we actually update the curriculum. So my original training was to do a full wrap tumbler just in the mug press. And then after I started playing around the convection oven, I was like, whoa, this is a game changer. The results are so much better than a mug press. I mean, it's almost flawless. Like it's really, really good. Especially, just to give you a recap, when you are doing a full wrap tumbler um, and you do it in the mug press, it's theoretically really hard to get like that lip, that professional lip to go underneath um, for it to transfer. The mug press doesn't do that. But when you're using the convection oven, you tape it really well. Mm -hmm. Some people saran wrap it and I, I personally will just be real with you. I don't, and you'll see the results I get with my full wraps. I mean, they're flawless. But nonetheless, you are gonna get something awesome. So uh, yeah, that's what I recommend you. Sandra, it's $80, so it's a really great deal um, in comparison to some other things on the market. So just be um, careful uh, deciding so that you can save money, have something be effective. If you're making and selling projects, sublimation is for sure for you. Um, and we love that. So anyway, let's head back over to Design Space. This is super awesome over here at Cricut Design Space. Um, you can see I have the water 
color. And then right here, we're going to take our background. And I'm just going to place it. You can pick like what area you want to do it on. I'm just going to place it right here. Um, and then we're going to select two layers, these two, and we're going to press slice. So the cool thing about this is those shapes, you have access to those shapes with Maker's Gonna Sublimate. Yes. And you can make those shapes literally any color you want with the backgrounds yep. and that we have just by using that slice tool. I love the slice tool. I know. It's so good. And then now that we have that, we're going to come over here and I'm just going to pick one flower. So you can pick really whichever one you would like. Um, you don't have to be particular today for this one I'm going to pick right here. I'm just going to zoom in, bring these over. And look at, our, guys, our new keyboard makes me feel like we really are going places. I know. Like, <laughs> if y'all did not know, like, it's, it's a game changer. Now, guys, if you're ever wondering, like, why is this not where I want it to be, all you need to do is um, select the layer and then go to Arrange, and then you can click Send to Front. So I'm just gonna leave my cursor there for a second so you can see where a range is. You can see my little cursor. You can see the send a front button. Feel free to screenshot this if this will help you in the future. So just click that, bada beam, bada boom. Now I can size it down. Love that, love, love, love it. All right, next up, we are going to pull out our two fonts. So again, we're using Albuquerque um, for the always. So you can just search owl and you want Albuquerque. So Heather says, is the mug press course in sublimation? So everything in the sublimation course is gonna be always available to you. Yes. If you don't have space for the oven, the oven is, when we say oven, it's not, it's literally like a tabletop. Like it would fit on oh, this little table. Yes, 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 yes. It's, it's, I mean, it's small. It's about, I don't want to give you exact dimensions. <laughs> um, but it's not like a big oven, but I, we understand if you don't have space, but everything yeah. in the simulation course will be available to you always. Yes, 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 yes. All right, so do you see how I just grabbed another text box? Guys, let's just have a quick overview of working with fonts. Let's do a little design. It is very intentional, my friend, that we have merged together a script font with what we call a basic font. So for Albuquerque, you could use the Albuquerque font. I love this one. If you're looking for one, I love you a lot as well. You could also use Barefoot Joanna. I feel uh -huh. like you all could guess that one. I love it. Um, and yeah, you can always, you know, merge it together with the Addie Kate font or the Blown Away font or any of our script fonts. Like this looks really great together and it's kind of awesome to have in your back pocket, honestly. Um, so that's all you have to do to design it. What we did over here on the left was we took a three um, inch circle to rep represent our acrylic blank. And then we sized it down. So, but before we sized it down, we have one more tip. So if you notice, I have, I have multiple layers. I mean, look at all these layers I have. I have two text boxes, I have the spring flower, and I have the slice result. If I press make it right now for those layers on the mat, you're going to see I have, you know, multiple, multiple mats you know, there's quite a bit going on. So what we need to do is just select all of our layers and we're just going to go ahead and click flatten. Now flatten is the one thing that probably needs its own training because flatten is my secret weapon for um, turning any, any design into print and cut or into a sublimation file with uh, design space. So that's all you do. You size it for your acrylic blank like we already did. Um, and then you would print this out on some amazing, amazing, I'm actually gonna delete this out. You're gonna go ahead and I'll flatten this one too. So they're both flattened. And then when you press make it, you're going to see we are actually going to print this um, on the, through Cricut Design Space. So we're actually going to use Cricut Design Space for the sublimation training, um, which is awesome. Now we are actually not having to do any sort of mirroring today. Traditional sublimation, please mirror it. But today's project, you don't have to. But if you need to, here's the mirror button. On, off, it's not necessary. 
So and the reason it's not necessary is because we are actually where it is an acrylic round. Yes, yeah, sublimating the back. Through it. Mm -hmm. You're sublimating the back. That way, nothing rubs off on the front. Yes, yes. Thank you for reminding me to explain that. It's okay. <laughs> um, and then when you press continue, I am going to help you all understand how to get the best uh, basic print settings. Um, so let's click send to printer, and we're going to use system dialog, and then press print. Oh, and I would turn bleed off. Um, I accidentally forgot, but I, if you need to, if, say you're like me and you forgot to, click this X, click send to printer, turn bleed off, turn system dialog on, and press print. And then it's go pop up on the back, just like so. Now, I want to let you all know, when you are using a sublimation printer, you have to sync up your colors with your ink, with your printer, and your computer. They all three work together. The printer, the ink of your sublimation ink of choice, and your computer. They all three work together. Um, so we are super, super excited for that. You can go over here and go from normal to best quality. I highly recommend that. Um, and we're using a sub sublimation paper today. So a sub sublimation paper, we use our Epson um, and that's awesome. So any of that is really, really good. You can have more, um, you know, kind of layouts. You could go over here to print settings. I like to tell it that we're actually using uh, matte paper because it'll know that we need to um, go ahead and give a little bit more ink than if it was glossy so it seeps in which is great for sublimation uh, if you didn't mirror it you could actually mirror it here but we're not needing that today and then you print it out so pretend you printed it out and you have it let's go overhead to our design so this right here is printed on a sub paper today and it's awesome so we love 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 that I'm gonna grab my pair of scissors, doo -doo -doo. and then look, we're just gonna cut this out. So we're actually just going to cut this out today, just like so. Lauren, how is everyone doing? They're doing great, they are doing great. Um, <laughs> Heather, the one that we were talking about, the oven. Hey, Heather. Um, the reason she does it is because she lives in a tiny house in Hawaii, <gasps> she's living my dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, Heather, honey. Yeah, I really understand. I hope you go to the beach. Maybe, I mean, I'm honored that she's watching. I hope you're at your tiny home. We want to live vicariously through you. Yes, yes. Will you start making TikToks? <laughs> just make TikToks. Yeah, just so make we TikToks can, about so it. So we can see where yes, yeah, see Yes, the yes. So notice this is very matte paper. And notice, I just want to give you, let me give the background here too. If you notice, um, this is a little bit, the, the finished is a little bit more vibrant than our printout. That is normal for sublimation, okay? That is very normal. So what we're gonna do now, we have heat resistant tape on the table and we're actually going to tape our design to the back of one of our acrylic blanks. So I'm just gonna remove this right here. And before we tape it, we're actually going to um, clean it with rubbing alcohol. Love cleaning any acrylic, glass, anything like that. It's actually, with alcohol. when you're doing sublimation, one of the things that um, I have discovered, whether it be an acrylic, you would clean it with rubbing alcohol, but if you are doing any type of um, shirt or like a- um, Lint roll it. You oh, you to gotta lint roll, roll. it. It is, a, it is imperative that you clean or lint yeah. roll because any little fiber yep. will seep into what you are Yes, and, and you know, if you don't have, you know, if it's dusty or, you know, it's linty or anything like that, you're just not going to get a great look for those t-shirts. So you just want to be careful about that. So now that we have that, we are actually going to now take our design, and this is the technically the back, but notice how we're just going to lay it here, and then we can kind of place it perfectly, like wherever we want it. So right here looks good to me. And remember, now I can touch it because I'm touching the front. And then I'm going to start taping it just like so. So I want to make sure I really secure it on here because we're placing this inside our um, our big old StarCraft clamshell, which if you're just tuning in, I love the thing. Like I absolutely love our yeah. clamshell. So Mommy Care said, can you sublimate on any acrylic keychain or any acrylic blank? 
Um, I believe, so acrylic you can actually sublimate on and it's really, really awesome. So yeah. um, if it's flat, um, I would definitely, you know, make sure depending on, you say any, so that starts to scare me like yeah, if there's any certain. Yeah, any is like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say yes, you can on any. Yeah, that'd be like saying you can sublimate on any piece of wood. Like, I wouldn't yeah. sublimate on any piece of wood. I mean, I wouldn't sublimate on treated wood. Yeah, exactly. Like, you have to be careful right. um, with all of it. So, yeah, you, but you can sublimate on acrylic in general. So, that's awesome. Okay, so I just added some tape. I'm going to add one more piece for safety. Did I overdo it? Probably. It's okay. But, okay. So, what we're going to do now, you might ask a question, Tanner. Do I sublimate acrylic up? Do I sublimate acrylic down? Wherever your sublimation paper is, the sandwich should be, actually, speaking of sandwich, I'm gonna rip this in half. Okay, we're gonna have, the sandwich will be inside your heat press, which we'll go to the heat press camera here in a minute. You will do a butcher's paper down, your design with your sublimation paper facing up, and then another piece of butcher's paper. So Sadie, can we go over here to our clamshell camera? Thank you. So we've got our butcher's paper down here. We're preheated to 385, y'all, 385. And then what we have done is we have got the timer set for 50 seconds. Not, um, not 60 seconds. We had some issues when we went to 60 seconds. So what we're doing today is we're going to place our sublimation design. I'm actually, Lauren, go intentionally place it more towards the front. And why I'm placing it more towards the front is because this is acrylic. I don't want it to warp too bad. I feel like right. if it's further back, it's gonna have even more pressure. Right. Um, I let the pressure gauge on mine kind of loosen up. Yeah. Mine's not gonna be, I, I almost thought about just holding it, like not even fully pressing it down. You could do whichever one. I would test it and be careful. So we're gonna place another piece of butcher's paper. If you don't have butcher's paper, y'all, you need the course because if you don't know why mm -hmm. you use butcher's paper, what it's for, just get the course. Like yeah. you really need it. It's really important. So now we're gonna press this down and that's a little scary. Like hearing that click in yeah. is very, very scary. And so it's already counting down the 50 seconds. We did get a question. Can you sublimate with your press iron? I'm gonna say no, because I don't think the irons, like press irons that you use um, when you are pressing your clothes, they don't get hot enough anymore. Right. This needs to be, we are sitting at what, 3 385 85? is very hot yes. for uh, Cricut and is almost the almost one of the highest temperatures yes. I'd use when I'm sublimating. Right. Like 400 is like the top. So mm -hmm. 385 is very, very warm. Um, so no, I, this is not something you can do with a regular iron. Yeah. Um, you need a heat press. You could do a version of this with an easy press. Yes, you could I do I would it. love to see, I mean, you could easily do this. Oh, here we go. Whoop. Okay, this is important, so we're gonna be quiet. Yep, so we're, we're opening this up. Now, the number one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go straight from here, is we are putting this straight inside of the water, okay? So we're placing this right into the water. I just wanted you to be able to see us place this in the water. And we're gonna let that, that's what we're gonna use to cool this off. Now ours did warp, so I'm actually gonna show, share with you how to fix that after we let this sit for about two minutes. So I'm gonna go back over to the main camera. So right, but right back over here, I'm turning my heat press off because it gets hot. It's like warm, like I'm sweating. <laughs> um, so it's so good. Uh, make sure you use cast acrylic. Thank you, Karen. Cast acrylic is really great for this. Um, and we, we love that. So we're gonna let this cool off a little bit. Um, it's oh, very important. She did say she meant the Cricut press iron. Like, so oh, if it's the Cricut easy press. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Because you can get to um, 300 and uh, 85 degrees. So that is that is awesome. But we're just gonna let this sit here and cool off. So what we are gonna do is plug in our awesome, awesome, our Wagner heat gun. And then what we're gonna do is here in a minute, we're gonna use a little pan and a bottle of paint and we're gonna unwarp it. So this is gonna be really great. Um, Lauren, I don't I mean, know about you, I love my Wagner heat gun. Yes. I use this for a lot of a lot of tricks, a lot of different DIYs. It's so good. So anyway, I'm just going to throw this away just like so. So that water also helps the um, 
paper come off of the sublimated acrylic as well. Yes, that's it's uh, not there's a, just to cool it down. No, it's also it's, to help bring that paper. There's off. multiple hacks happening here, which is really awesome. I love that. that there's multiple hacks happening, um, and it's so good. So here we go. Look at this. We can go overhead um, if we're not already, so you can kind of see here in the water. You can kind of start taking this tape off. And the, it's okay if you have paper that gets stuck to your acrylic. That is part, because I remember the first time Courtney. Um, she was freaking out. She freaked out the first time that she sublimated on acrylic. But it's one of those that if you sit it, let it sit in the water and you just kind of rub it off or scratch it off, it comes right off. Yeah, I'm getting the uh, tape off first. I found that to be like once the tape's off, everything else is just go kind of flow a little bit better. So while we're doing this, like, let me know if you all have any questions. Are there anything you all want us to cover? Um, this could be membership related. This could be cricket related, silo or um, sublimation related. <laughs> no, so oh my goodness! Yet. Oh my goodness! Carol says, "I ruined a garden flag the other day. Do you think it was weight of big easy press? Temp suggested from one four three or time." Um, Carol, were you sublimating or cricketing? She says, "Ruined." I want to assume sublimating. Carol, were yeah. you sublimating? Let me know. So what I'm gonna do is just start using my finger and start rubbing it off. And as you see here, it just starts coming off kind of in chunks, which is great. So look at this. Oh my goodness, look at this. It is a little, um, just a little bit time consuming to take that paper off. So yeah. just be patient. Yeah. Give yourself a little grace. Yes, 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 yes. It's all about that. So let's see how many friends we have with us today. We have 206 watching. Woohoo! Hello, everyone. Which is a really good number, I feel like, yeah. for the last little bit. Yeah, I love that. So I'm just cleaning this Can up. Can you use infusible ink sheets on acrylic blanks? Can you use infusible ink sheets on acrylic blanks? Yes. So it is just printed, um, it is just printed sublimation. So yeah, so that's that's what you, you all should take away from this video is that believe it or not, um, sublimation is like printed infusible ink sheets is just, um, it's just printed sublimation. Like instead of you printing your own sublimation design, right. Cricut printed it for you right. and you are just going to use theirs. Okay, so Michelle, while he's doing this, I, your, your question popped up. I have sublimation seat belt straps. Are you meaning like the actual strap of Let like a know. seat belt? Or are you talking about like the little cover that goes over it so the seat belt doesn't rub like on your neck? Oh, I bet it's one of those. Bet, that's cool. So that's what I was that's thinking. awesome. Anyway, she asked what time, temperature or time would you recommend on a swing away? That's something that you have to play around with. Um, if it is like the fuzzy, like kind of plush thing that you put around a seat belt, I would think it would be about the same as a blanket, which I think we did at 400, 460. Is yeah. that right? 400 for 60, yeah. yeah. So I love doing, guys, doing sublimation with blankets is actually so fun, so, so fun. So Carol says she was sublimating. It Carol. Was a, yeah, she, Michelle, and then Michelle said it's a cover. So <gasps> oh if it's gosh. one of those like Velcro covers that is yes. kind of more plush, yeah. that's what I would suggest. Tana, yeah. do you have any? You know, I, I, I love, I would say 400. I would say 400. Um, and we're trying to figure out time too. She said temp and time. Yeah, the, yeah, 400 for 60 seconds. If it's more like a blanket material, that's what we yeah. use and it works really, really good. So that's what we recommend. I love that. Um, you're gonna really enjoy being able to um, sublimate on blankets. Like I just wanna give a that's highlight. A good... I teach how to sublimate on blankets in the course too. So we love that. I've done it live as well, but there's so many good tips that you'll you'll enjoy. So, Not yay. plush. I bet Not it's plus. more of the neoprene. Neoprene, uh, okay, yeah. Around the same time, 380 might work. Um, yeah. One thing I do love is in the um, Makers on the Sublimate, just like in our membership, we have a temperature chart for our friends that are cricketing. We have a temperature chart for our friends that sublimate. So mm -hmm. um, feel free to download that when you join because let me tell you, trying to scour the web for all the different temperatures, very frustrating, y'all, very frustrating. So definitely check that out. Now, what we're going to do, 
this is the fun part. We are going to go to the high setting. We are going to watch this acrylic kind of flatten out. As you guys can see, can we have the overhead? Um, this overhead right here, you guys see that? That is not that is not cutting it. I know. Not cutting it. So we're just gonna melt this and then I'm going to place a paint bottle on here just to help flatten it out because it will be very warm. So we're just gonna have to be a an actual like paint can, like anything heavy that's not yes. going to like, I don't want to say ruin with the heat because it is going to get hot. Yeah, that is true. So I'm just going to warm this up. Just warming her up. Let's I didn't think about I'll... neoprene. There, guys, when you think about all the different things you can sublimate, I mean, I just get so excited. Yeah. Let's see. What are our friends saying? Um... Would it be easier to clean the paper off with a pan scrubber? I thought about using a hand scrubber, but then I really like to keep my material simple and using your fingers fine. So that's why I did it. Um, oh, Linda, please email us and we'll get you the temperature chart. So I'm gonna drop that link for our customer service team. Yes. If anyone has any questions, definitely email us. It's hi at uh, makersgonnalearn.com, but I will drop that right here. Yes. Now look, it's already flattening out and you really don't even have to use the paint can because it's already flattening out. I should have put a piece of butcher's paper under here. Um, Are you warming the front or the back? They're I'm warming the back because okay. it, wherever it's warped, I'm wanting it to flatten out. Um, so you can, you can then place that on there just like so. So I can kind of see how it's doing. Oh my goodness, that was... <gasps> Wow, that flattened out quick. That flattened That's out crazy. real quick, real quick. Oh, she's hot. Okay, we're gonna sit it over here. But as you guys can see now, see? I mean, this is flat. <laughs> that yeah. was so fast. I love yeah. that. Okay, so after that's flattened out, you guys, that was impressive. Like, obviously not everyone's gonna have a heat gun, but what I'm gonna tell you is that if you don't have a heat gun and you're doing this project, Lauren, I don't know if there, we've tried multiple ways, but you're still go run a risk of warping because you're having to get it so hot to sublimate, but then the acrylic wants to obviously warp a little. Yeah. Were we just talking about like flattening the acrylic? They because were asking, can you flatten it as soon as you pull it out and then put it in water after it flattens? I, I don't think so. I, that, from us, I don't believe that so because it would be like extra can, hot or you can't because mm. we didn't test it that way yeah we this was the easiest way for us to get the result but also we have the heat gun so like that was helpful to have in our back pocket so i'm not sure um i do have another one that we could just hypothetically test real quick i, I mean, say let's do it i mean why not that's what you all are here for we're I here to hang out it. we um, have it so we'll do it real we quick. also had a friend ask us hello let me find it and then it was really good uh, it was why do why are we using the heat gun? Where did it go? Oh, the heat gun. Well, it, we were or, flattening it oh, out. Oh, right, there it is. Why the heat gun rather than boiling water? Oh, well, maybe you could use boiling water. Again, we have a craft room. So in our craft room, we don't <laughs> just boil water a lot. But I mean, it, yeah, I, I guess it would work. It, if it gets up to that temperature Heck for you yeah. to be able to pull it out and. Heck yeah. I love I that. Mean, okay, so we're just gonna do this real quick. I'm turning my my thing, my clamshell back on. I'm gonna try to see if it remembers our settings. Uh, do, do, she do, do, said do. that she reflattens her acrylic plates um, with bold water. Oh, look at you! I mean, I love it. I, I do too. Absolutely love it. I do too. So, okay, what we're gonna do is we have another one because um, we just magically have others, and we're going to. I'm gonna set this up to where we're gonna take it and like instantly flatten it. Yeah. Like no cold water, we're gonna try to flatten it right away because I think that's a great idea. So I'm gonna have my handy dandy Wilton pan here. I'm going to have my butcher's paper. I'm gonna grab more butcher's paper. And then we're just gonna, as soon as we press that, we're going to flatten it out with our handy dandy Starcraft chalk and mineral paint bottle, which I mean, hey, we flatten it, we flatten it. So yay! An embossing wand, I believe, would work. It would take a little bit longer. Because let me tell you, this uh, this heat gun gets hot fast. Yeah. So we're at 266 degrees. So um, real quick, let's just talk about, just add your keychain accessories. 
I would recommend having a pack of these on hand if you're a cricketer or crafter at all, because um, you're going to use this in many different crafts. Leather keychains, acrylic keychains, um, you can put vinyl on acrylic as well. So if you're watching today and you're like, I don't sublimate, what can I do? You can add vinyl to these. You can paint the backs if you want. If you don't want to do the watercolor design that we did, um, that's very trendy. Lauren, who hasn't seen the vinyl and the, the paint on the acrylic keychains, I mean, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, so, so good. And yeah, we're just getting we're just getting preheated right now. Now I wish I didn't turn it off. I mean, well, it was getting very hot. It, can you feel it over there? I can. <laughs> can you feel uh, it over not there? Not necessarily. Can I feel it over here? But I also know that oh, we don't have the air on in that here. That is all right, guys. So we we've been able to take this. I taped it just very gently. We're really not even worried about the design at this point. We're mainly worried about getting this elevated. So let's take this, place it down, and then place this right here. And then we're gonna do this real quick. And then boom. Okay. So for those of you that, if you are just now joining, what we're doing is we're. So you can learn with this. Okay, we gotta do this fast. Boom. We're gonna take this. Pull. Boom and boom. Actually, when you pulled that out, it didn't look like it warped. Really? Yeah. I can't. I mean, from over here, it did not look like it warped at all. It looked like it was warped when I looked at it. Lauren. Okay. Okay. I mean, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it was. <laughs> but if it was, it's not no more. It's not warped now. Look at that. Oh, well, I guess it's still hot. It's Yeah, it's hot. Don't touch it. <laughs> Put your gloves on, child. <laughs> okay. Don't break it. It's okay. It's good. It's good. It's actually really good. It's actually a lot better than our other one. So, like, you can... Here, we'll go overhead. <laughs> you can see, like, it's barely i mean this is so much better than before so right. um yeah that's awesome and you have this so wow i mean look so i there think it go. works but also i don't think it warped near as bad we could say that i probably easily. would have left personally probably would have left the paint can if it was more warped than that probably yeah. would have left the paint can just a little bit longer yeah um, but i really like i just don't know that it was warped when we pulled it out the first time uh, and okay. i think it's because Here's my, here's my, let, I'll clean that up later. Here's my theory. Oh, Lauren's got a theory. I, theory. I love it. I love so, it. <laughs> our heat press was on how long before oh. and it got super hot and it just preheated and we put it in there. Wow. I think that's the key. Get what you're doing with acrylic ready. And as soon as it's preheated, Go Pop, for it. Go for it then. And don't let it sit there and get hot. So hot. That's the pro tip that you wouldn't get yeah. if we were doing a recorded video. I, I try to explain to people why live streams are so powerful and why they're fun and why they're great. It's stuff like this where you get to ask questions, you get to interact, you get to dive in and really see the process, which I really, I really, really love. So. Guys, thanks so much. I hope you all have a great day. We'll see you back here real soon. Make sure you pop over to our Instagram, Instagram or and TikTok. TikTok. Yes. Like our stuff. <laughs> Thank Bye you guys. guys. Bye.